Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 4 of Direwolf20's Mod Spotlight covering RF Tools. Today we have two more blocks to cover before we've pretty much covered everything there is to look at in RF Tools. Today's episode is going to be dedicated to two of the most powerful and complex blocks in the mod, the Builder and the Energetic Generator. So these two mods are actually super powerful. So first off, there's the Builder. This thing can do pretty much any manipulation of blocks in the world that you can imagine. It can quarry, it can build, it can move, it can copy and paste, it can build geometric shapes, it can clear out areas, it can do all kinds of things. It can collect items in the XP, it can pump up liquids. There's a lot the builder can do for you, and it's actually pretty slick in what it can do. Uh, so we're going to be playing with that a little bit, and then we're going to check out the Endergenic Generator. The Endergenic Generator is a really powerful block that can make lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of power out of Ender pearls. However, it's very complex and you have to build up some pretty complicated redstone systems. So we're going to probably show some basic ones today and uh, we'll probably look at some more of the advanced ones maybe throughout the Forgecraft series or something like that. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start with the builder and then get into the endogenic generator. All right, guys. So the builder block. Lots of features. We're going to cover some of the basics. So it's named the Builder, so let's take a look at its ability to build. Then we'll look at its ability to quarry. Then we'll look at its ability to copy and paste existing structures in the world. Should be pretty cool. We'll also take a look at liquids. Nice. So uh, first off, you're going to need a shape card. The shape card indicates what type of function the Builder is going to do. So you've got your basic shape card that lets you build, but you've also got one for space chambers, which is how we copy and paste structures. Uh, you've got the shape card to void out an area, which will basically cause the Builder to void all blocks in the configured space rather than build blocks in the configured space. Cool. Um, and uh, you've also got the quarry. So quarries, there are several types of quarries, but they're all pretty straightforward. And then you've got the liquid kind. So let's take a look first at the shape card for building. So the shape card here allows you to define a set of dimensions. Um, you can see currently by default, it comes with a five by five by five block. So that's five on the X, five on the Y, five on the Z with an offset of zero. What this means, Pop, if we pop it in there, um, it will basically, and you can use this button here, support slash preview mode. Ta-da! This will uh, show you what the five by five shape looks like. So you can see it's one, two to the left and one, two to the right. That's a five by five shape. And you can right click on the area to remove it. Neat. Um, if you wanted this to be a larger area, um, you can make it like 15 by 15 by 15. Cool, install that and hit preview and suddenly it's a larger area. Cool, so if you wanna build, I don't know, what would be a nice square shape that Dyer's famous for that would be neat to build? Oh yeah, the perfect house. <laughs> Sweet. So uh, that's pretty much how the builder block works. Now you can do a couple other features with the shape card. For example, um, if you wanted to go ahead and uh, specify a specific shape, you could uh, believe it's shift right click on here, now select the first corner. So say we want to build from here to here. It copies those settings into the shape card. So you can see what the shape card is. Uh, it's the dimensions seven by three by nine with an offset of four by one by four. So the offset um, offsets the shape of the box, right? So if we pop this in here, we should see that exact shape that I just you know chose. So offsets are a little bit funky to understand, but once you get the hang of them, they're really not that hard. Um, let's go ahead and clear this, and we're going to set this back to 0, 0, 0, and 9 by 9 by 9. Okay, so if we were to preview this again, it's a 9 by 9, right? Now what if we wanted to offset it in the, what direction is this? Positive x direction, okay? And we offset it by, I want to say, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So I'm gonna take this and we're going to offset the shape by five. What that should do is move my nine by nine, five blocks forward in the X direction, okay? So offset simply just says, hey, instead of centering around the builder block being the center, it offsets it, the center is now five blocks positive on the X direction and we've got a nice nine by nine over here, sweet. Now, if offsets confuse you and you know you just want to start at a specific corner, that's not a problem. Um, when we install this guy, we can choose the support mode. It has some buttons on the UI. So for example, if we said start building at the southwest corner, 
and then preview it, notice it's going to automatically place the block there. And if we say southeast corner, it'll automatically put it there. What those buttons do is manipulate the shape card itself to change the offset to match the corner. So it basically takes, oh, it's a nine by nine by nine, so I need to offset by five, four, and negative four in order to offset it. And you'll notice now that it is in fact nine blocks tall because when I did nine by nine by nine, it was centering on the Y axis um, for the builder on the center block here. So it would actually go four below and four above. Now it's, you know, nine straight up. So that's pretty neat. So that's how you can uh, manipulate your shapes. And these are rules that you're gonna basically wanna follow for any and all blocks that you're um, putting into your quarry card. Uh, so if you use like the quarry cards or if you use the liquid cards or the shape card for voids, these rules all kind of apply. So it's probably good that we get them out of the way now. So let's go ahead and build our nine by nine by nine and see how that works. So let's go ahead and actually build something. It's pretty easy. You just define your shape card, like so, and make sure you're in uh, support mode so you can see what it's gonna look like when you place it. Not bad. That looks like a pretty nice building. Yeah, I could live there. The only thing you're gonna wanna pay attention to, though, is what type of design you're gonna make. So Solidbox is actually gonna fill in the interior with a bunch of cobblestone. You don't want that. So go ahead and make yourself just a regular box. You'll also see the number of blocks that are needed on the bottom left here. That's handy so you know how many materials you're gonna need. Go ahead and install your card, apply a redstone signal, and ta-da, you suddenly have a lovely nine by nine. Beautiful. Now let's say we want to get rid of that. We don't want that nine by nine anymore. Not a problem. Go ahead and get yourself a shape card void. Do the shape of a box and the dimension of a nine by nine by nine. And this will void out any blocks that are in that pattern. Um, so we can go ahead and preview it, but you're not going to be able to really see the preview because there's blocks in the way. So let's just trust that I did this correctly and apply a redstone signal again. Now remember that 9 by 9 goes down, right? Just keep that in mind. But that's why we've got a builder's wand ready. Pretty neat, right? And as you can guess, there are a large number of shapes. You can have domes, you can have bottom domes, spheres, cylinders, cap cylinders, prisms, torus. I'll leave it up to you guys to play with all these different shapes to figure out what they all look like. But long story short, you can build a lot of cool stuff and you can build custom stuff in a little bit. We'll take a look at that. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the quarry. So the quarry card uh, requires pretty much the same design, but there's a few extra options that we're gonna go ahead and take a look at. Um, so first things first, we wanna do the same design, right? So let's say um, we wanted to clear out a nine by nine in front of the box, right? So that should be easy, right? Nine by nine by nine, 729 blocks. We want a solid box directly in front of us. And uh, we're going to want to remove the void card and place the nine by nine quarry card in here. Let's preview it. Yeah, that's not what we want, right? Let's go ahead and set it at the southwest corner. So it's gonna quarry out that entire space. But you know what? Normally we don't quarry up, we quarry down. So let's choose the northwest corner and that will quarry down. And uh, you know what? I actually wanna go all the way down to bedrock, don't I? So let's make this 125, right? I'm currently standing at Y position 67. So technically 70 should work down to bedrock, but we'll see, okay? So if we preview this guy now and make sure that we are at Northwest corner, we'll note that it's doing a dimension 979 offset five, negative 34, four. So this should go pretty much all the way down to bedrock and it should quarry. The other option that we have on a quarry card is what to void. We can void stone, cobblestone, dirt, gravel, sand, and netherrack. And we can specify to enable or dictionary matching or not. So sometimes there's or dictionary stuff in there that we might want to match up. Um, in this example, yeah, we could probably clear everything. So now that we've got an empty chest on top to collect all the resources we get, simply once again, apply a redstone signal. And it should start quarrying once we place our quarry card actually in there. Hey, it's not clearing it out. By default, the quarry card will, as it says on here, uh, cause the builder to quarry all blocks in the configured space and replace them with dirt. So you don't have a big empty hole in your world. That's kind of nice. You'll also notice progress on there, what Y level it's at, what chunk, it's currently working in and what mode it's in. Nice, and if you mouse into here, you can see what Y level the builder is currently at as well. Um, so we know it's getting all the way down to bedrock. Cool, just hit Y level 10, 
uh, and it might be done. Sweet. And uh, it's done because we filled up our chest. Give it a little bit more space in there. Reapply the redstone signal. It might continue where it left off. We'll see. But that's pretty cool, right? There it goes. All the way down to Y level zero. And it just finished. And now the quarry is at stop mode. And it collected pretty much everything except the stuff we told it to collect. So it didn't collect any dirt or cobble or anything else. Um, what you may want to do is have a larger quarry, obviously. But you also may want to clear out stuff. And in that case, you're going to want the quarry clearing quarry. This guy is simply you take your shape card quarry and surround it by glass. It works exactly the same way. So 9079 is what we had. So 979. And we had 5, negative 34, 4. 5, negative 34, 4. We stick the clearing quarry in there. 979, 5, negative 34, 4. Yeah, that looks right. Does the exact same thing. Um, and also we can tell it to void things so that we don't pick it all up. So it pretty much does the exact same thing, except it clears out the area. Neat. And you can see it actually did replace all the way down to bedrock in this chunk uh, with dirt. So dirt all the way down to bedrock because that's what the previous quarry did. Uh, you can see what Y level it's at, and it's obviously not picking up any of that dirt because we told it to avoid it. So that's how you use the builder to make a quarry. It's pretty quick. Uh, it does require a lot of RF though, so keep that in mind. Other quarry cards include the silk quarry, which basically silk touches things. So instead of getting diamonds, you'll get diamond ore, coal ore, redstone ore, etc. Fortune quarry applies a fortune upgrade to the quarry, um, but again, that uh, requires 600 RF per tick per block. Uh, whereas this guy requires 300, so it's pretty much double the power uh, for the fortune. It's triple the power for the silk touch upgrade, so that's pretty expensive. Um, and this guy requires some dimensional shards um, and some diamonds and emeralds and such. Cool. Let's check out the pump card. Should be pretty easy. Um, select your first corner, so I guess that would be here, and your second corner could be here. Uh, and if we place this card in here and tell it to give me an example of what that looks like, yeah, that looks cool. So let's get some water buckets and give this thing a try. Should be pretty doable. Uh, so this should clear out uh, some water. Now there's two different types of pumps, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the pump card that replaces it with dirt, which if we're pumping water up, we probably don't want. And uh, the clearing pump. Now the clearing pump might be really quick and it might clear before this thing has a chance to refill. I've literally not tested this before. So we're gonna see what it looks like. Pump clearing. So that should be going. So I just put a drum up there. There's something funny between fluid tanks and ender IO and RF tools, because that didn't work either. But the drum worked, nice. Sweet. I like it. Uh, now we can do a single step and stop or keep running with redstone signal. It is pretty quick, I won't lie. So you might need a larger area um, to make sure that it can refill itself if you're pumping water up. But this can be used to pump up lava in the nether. It can be used for lots of different things, right? And you can actually have two different liquids, one tank on the top and one on the bottom. So if you're pumping up an area that has multiple liquids, it'll get both of them and put them into the right tanks. Pretty slick. Let's say that I've made some amazing pixel art in my world. Some pixel art that's so amazing I don't think anybody could ever replicate it in their lifetime. I want to move it or copy it. I can use space chambers to accomplish that. Let's check out how they work. So space chambers, the first thing you want to remember is they're going to be inclusive uh, to the area that you build in. So if we were to paste the space chamber here, we would miss this line. Um, so make sure to place your space chambers outside the area that you want to include. Okay, you need one space chamber controller block and the rest need to be space chamber corner blocks. And you need all corners covered. Okay, so make sure that you include all corners here. Notice that I'm placing my space chamber corner block above my cobblestone. It should be noted that you need all corners. Simply right click on your corner shape here and you'll find out whether or not your shape is valid. Oh, I forgot a corner, the one right above this one. So let's do that. Right here should be good.
and try right clicking again. Oh, not a valid chamber shape. Must have done something funny. The corners on this side were one block too low. Now we have a successfully created chamber. Nice. The other thing we're going to want is a space chamber card. Pretty easy to get. Uh, you just craft it and then uh, you right click it to bind the channel. So now this space chamber card is linked to this space chamber corner. Sweet. If you right click the card, by the way, it'll show you what's inside the area in terms of the number of blocks that you'll need to have if you want to copy it and how much RF it'll cost to move it. And keep in mind that it can move entities. Nice, including item entities. Cool. Pretty neat, right? So uh, obviously total cost of entities costs a little bit more to move entities, but uh, if you wanted to, you can move animals. Ha, mm. <laughs> cool. So let's go see what we can do over here. If we were to place the space chamber card in here, we have a couple options. We can either copy the space chamber to here, chest on top or below with materials, move from space chamber to here, or swap space with the contents of what's already here over to there. Cool. Or we can move it back. So let's say we've already moved it and we want to put it back. So let's do, uh, or collect items, uh, collect items in the space chamber, items will go directly into the chest. So were there mob drops or uh, experience orbs or something like that, collect is what you would use if you want to pick up those items but not move any of the blocks in the area. Neat, right? Um, so let's do move. That sounds pretty cool. Now, if we uh, wanted to show, hey, that's not cool. That's not exactly what we want. It's probably being rotated. So set the horizontal rotation angle. Hmm, let's see. How can we rotate this guy to behave himself? There we go. You just need to make sure that you apply things at the correct corner. So the way it was at the northeast corner, it was kind of rotated, but here, yeah, that looks a little good. It'll put it to the right there or here. Nice. So if we want to move it, all we got to do is right click this guy and apply the redstone signal. Sweet, it worked. Awesome. Now if we want to move it back, it's as easy as doing back. So cool. Now, provided that you had a chest on top of the um, builder here and you had it in copy mode, it'll basically copy the structure using the resources from inside the chest. Nice. That's pretty cool. Not bad at all, right? Now, here's an interesting thing. I wonder if I put it on keep running with redstone signal. What'll happen? Oh, self rebuilding designs. Nice. So if you wanted a base that automatically rebuilds itself every time it gets blown up by a creeper or something, that might not be a terrible way to accomplish what you're looking to do. Obviously, you'll have to keep supplying this thing with cobblestone, but not bad, right? Also, by the way, if you're going to be moving entities, make sure the Entities are Moved button is highlighted. Costs a little extra RF, and it assumes by default you don't want to move any entities over there. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. And also just to highlight this, uh, remember I said it's inclusive to the space chamber, not um, you know where the blocks are. So if we were in move mode and we flopped the lever here, uh, what we should see is, or if we just put up like this thing, you'll notice that that column of cobblestone, not there, right? And when we hit the move button, it's not moving the cobblestone in that column. So make sure that your space chamber blocks, it's inside the corners, not inclusive to the corners. Neat stuff, right? Can you move tile entities? The answer is yes, sort of. Um, by default, the configs have it so only whitelisted tile entities can be moved, and the whitelist is pretty small. So uh, if you go into the configs, you can change it to blacklist, which means it can move everything except blacklisted items, or you can set it to allow, which allows it to move everything. Um, tile entities are pretty safe nowadays to move, but obviously enable at your own risk, um, and make sure if you're moving anything complex from any mods, um, that you might want to just make sure you have a good backup first. You never know. Uh, some mods do not like their tile entities being moved, though most of them are pretty cool with it nowadays. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Uh, make sure you're in move mode and... Ta-da! It even brought the items across. Nice. And we can move it back if we want. 
no problemo. And remember, by the way, swap move uh, means that it will swap whatever's in the current position with what's there. So I don't think I specifically covered this, um, but let's make sure to do it just in case. So we'll put it in swap mode. Notice that it moved the dirt into that position. Cool. And then um, if we swap again, it moves them back. Fancy. And as mentioned, if there's any items sitting around in this general area and you're hanging out in collect mode, activating the redstone signal will pick up those items and throw them inside the chest. Sweet. It should also be noted that it can pick up uh, experience orbs, as you may have just seen briefly there, and it'll store them as bottles of enchanting inside the chest above. Sweet. You're probably going to want to have this and keep running with redstone mode, and it'll just continuously run trying to collect any items and experience that land in that general area and throw them in the chest. So hopefully by now you'll realize why I pretty much needed to dedicate an episode to the builder. It can do a lot. It can copy and paste blocks, it can cut and paste blocks, it can move blocks around, it can quarry, it can build, it can collect items, it can collect experience, it can collect liquids. The builder can interact with almost anything that exists in the world, one way or another. It's a pretty powerful block. Um, and now looking at the time, I don't think I have time to cover the endogenic generator. So because that's such a complicated system anyway, it's probably a good idea for me to cover that in its own spotlight. So what I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here. You guys know how to all to use the builder now. And then we'll do a separate video for the endogenic generator. Sound like a plan? All right, Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Take it easy.